Well, Father, I truly do thank you for those who came out um, and sat at your table and <clears throat> eat fresh manna from heaven. Right now, Father, I thank you. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. This is your service, Father. And if there's something you want to do before we begin, Father God, you go right ahead. Because without you, we're nothing. Without your voice, we're nothing. And God's saying he just wants to settle in over us with a quietness and a surety of heart that all is well and that I, he is in control. Father God, we receive that right now. We thank you for it, Father. We thank you for it, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You know, <clears throat> without us knowing, if we don't know that God is in control of everything in our lives, good, bad, or indifferent, and if we don't know that God is in control of everything that's going on on the earth, then we're in trouble. And I didn't realize how often I say God is in control until somebody brought it to my attention. Uh, but he really is. He really is. Uh, his, his glory is so magnificent. And he, he himself is so awesome. And really, truly, if you're allowing him to, he's given his children great visitations right now. And he's revealing some deep things to us. But you have to be expecting him to move, and you have to be expecting him to do great mighty things in you in order for that to happen. God's always desiring to do something different to us, but are we desirous to have him do them? You know, that's the difference. And this morning, God talk, talked about love and how we had to be love vessels, you know. And, and if we don't have love, then he can't use us. All right. So let's start this. God is in control. This is a testimony that I read. It said, I remember, and this, we can all relate to this, all right. But I just wrote this person's testimony down. I remember a particular time in my life when I was struggling a bit with discouragement, doubt, fear, and loneliness. I spent many evenings having long conversations with a close friend to whom I poured out my heart for hours. Many times during these talks, my friend stopped me and said, but remember, God is in control. That statement became an anchor in my life. Then he goes on to say, well, in North Dakota, there were many mornings, afternoons, and nights that I was discouraged. Couldn't understand why is my opportunity and blessing here. Why not closer to my family, children, and friends? No matter how hard the winds blew or how much the adversity intensified, my soul remained anchored to that simple truth, God is in control. I am here to tell you that I couldn't have made it up. Up, I'm sorry. I am here to tell you that I couldn't have made it up there in 40-degree temperatures for the last four years without God. Some of you need to understand that sitting here tonight that without God, you wouldn't even be alive today. Because you, a lot of people cannot stand the pressures of life. And it's God who balances you out so that you can make it through each and every storm that you go through. He went on to say, during that time, I discovered that when a person is able to face terrifying obstacles with the assurance that God is truly in control, an awesome sense of power, strength, assurance, and confidence begins to well up inside your heart. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were able to face terrifying obstacles to worship their God. And you, you have to stop thinking what's going over in Afghanistan right now. Horrible, horrible things. And those people have to have assurance in their heart that God is in control. And that, that article we sent out there, the fathers and husbands gave the women guns and said, either kill them or kill yourself. You know, the choice is yours. It's a horrible thing, you know. 
they were willing to go into, and you were talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were willing to go into the fiery furnace and risk their lives because they knew God was in control. And they weren't going to worship the gold image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Always remember, God is still in control. Now, that was his testimony. Now, many times when I used to be anxious, God would ask this question, am I in control or not? And I believe if you if you start, stop and think, that God has asked you that question too, many times. And Psalms 103, 19 said, David learned this lesson through a life of ups and downs, successes and fierce challenges. That's how David learned that God was in control. So everything you're going through is trying to teach you that God is in control. He knows exactly what to do, what he's going to do with you. Verse 19, the Lord set his throne up in heaven and he rules over everything. Angels praise the Lord. You angels are the powerful soldiers who obey his commands. You listen to him and obey his commands. Praise the Lord, all his armies. You are his servants and you do what he wants. Everything the Lord has made should praise him throughout the world that he rules. My soul, praise the Lord. We should all be praising the Lord at all times. I don't care what we're going through. You know, and sometimes we're going, we go through hard things and, and we wonder, God, are, are you still there? Are you still in control? At least I, I do. Are you still there? Are you still in control? And he always assures me, yes, I'm still here. And yes, I'm still in control. And yes, you can make it through this fiery trial. Because he never, he never puts anything on us that we can't bear. David, Israel's most beloved king, recognizes his humble submission to the one who sits on the heavenly throne, the Lord of all creation. We need to learn the same lesson. And David also introduced us to a vital aspect of God's character, character, his complete sovereignty. What do we mean by sovereignty? This is a word that denotes God's supreme and absolute rule, control, and authority over this entire universe and every single human being. In this, he is all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-present. God is sovereign. You've heard me say that. And he can do whatever he wants to do. And, you know, if you said, here I am, God, I'm yours, use me, then that's what he's doing. You might not like what he's using you for, but you told him, here I am, Lord, use me. You gave him permission with all of his sovereignty to come and use your vessel to do whatever it is that he needs done at this given time. There are many people in this world who either deny God's existence or try to excuse him from responsibility when bad things happen. In effect, even those who may seek to defend God are saying, God exists, but he didn't allow that. That happened without his consent. That's not a true statement. It's not a true statement. Look at what happened when Job when when Job went before the Lord. Satan was there. And Satan wanted him. And God said, you can have him, but you can't kill him. So everything that Job went through a lot and everything that Job went through was with God's permission. Read about it. It's right there in your word. We I've taught on this before. Because when God said we were going through a Job experience, the whole church was going through a Job experience, we taught on that so that you'd understand what, what we was going through. And it was, it was with God's permission. What these people do not realize is that they are insulting and rejecting God's complete sovereignty over all aspects of life. You know, there's pastors out there preach that Christians will not suffer. I was in a church when I was first born again, and God told me, he said, that, that, that we were we would suffer. And I told my pastor that, and she kicked me out of the church. <laughs> and then I went and looked in the Word, and the Word says we will, right? But that teaching's out there, that doctrine's out there, that if you're a child of God, you will not suffer. All right, so why do people do this? Why do they seem to stumble over or overlook God's sovereignty? First, it is clear that these people do not understand the Word of God, which clearly teaches God's complete control over creation. Second, their idea of God is totally unbiblical and unfounded. They try to put God in a mold of what they think He should be, like and therefore replace His righteousness with their own. And as a result, if anything happens, they may claim that God had nothing to do with it. 
That's a poor state of mind when you think God is, isn't in control of your life all the time, either good, bad, or indifferent. That's a pretty bad state of mind. And that's going to get you lost. Everything that is going to occur in our lives is written in our book of life in heaven. This is what God spoke to me. And we, and we know we have a book of life, right? And everything that God knows, everything that's going to happen to us from beginning to end and all the in between. Let me ask you a question. If God is not in control, then who is? If no one or nothing is in control, does that mean that everything that happens is a result of chance or luck? Even Christians throw around the ideas of luck or good fortune. We hear that all the time. When I hear this, I immediately know that they do not understand God's word. You know, my family, they'll say, well, that was just luck. You know, I said, no, it was. I hear that a lot in my family. Scripture's clear. God is not in the luck business. He is in the blessing business. Your luck will run out, but the blessings of the Lord, of the Lord endures forever. Amen. If you were like me, I grew up, that's all you ever heard was, boy, that was luck. I was lucky, wasn't I? You know, we heard that all the time because then they weren't teaching, you know, the truth of the Bible. They were just teaching the Bible of some sort. If we replace God's sovereignty with sheer luck, we are simply saying that there is no plan or order in the universe. And we are the victims of our circumstances. If that is the case, then sometimes we'll be happy. Most of them would be unfulfilled. And we will always fear the future. So, so I said, if we replace God's sovereignty with sheer luck, we are simply saying that there is no plan or order in the universe. And we are the victims of our circumstances. We've heard that statement too. If that is the case, then sometimes we'll be happy. Most of them will be unfulfilled and we will always fear the future. Most of your promises will not be will not be fulfilled because you are not trusting the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God does not want us to live like this. He is in absolute control of every single event in this life. He is master over the things that affect his purpose for each of us. If we're going to say that God uses life to reveal his sovereignty, then it is natural to begin our look at the biblical evidence in the very first word of Scripture in Genesis 1.1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Think about what this means. God created everything that exists out of nothing. He put this and every other wor world in its place and created galaxies, solar systems, gravity, time, space. Literally every speck of matter in the universe, period. If he set all this in motion, then he is more than able to sustain his creation for eternity, period. If he formed you in your mother's womb and breathed life in you, he can keep you. You know, many times, you know, I've heard when I've been prophesying or people I heard, you know, God would say, you went down a side road that I never meant for you to go on. But it didn't, but he said, I was with you on those side roads. So he was always in control, even when you was weren't walking in the, the righteousness of God and you went on a side road of sin, God was still with you. He never left you nor forsook you. His, I'm quite sure your angel was with you saying, oh. <laughs> shaking her head, get back on the road where you belong, you know. <laughs> you know, because he had a hard time keeping you safe because you were out there doing dumb things, right? But God was still in control. Your angel never leaves you. According to what I'm reading in the Word, he never leaves you. Aside from creation itself, the Old Testament reveals God's control in every area, most notably over nature, nations, and even unbelievers. His dominion over nature is noted in the Psalms. As Psalm 135, 6 through 7 explains, Whatsoever the Lord pleased, that did he in heaven and in earth, in the seas and deep places. He causes the vapors to ascend from the end of the earth. He maketh the lightnings for the rain. He bringeth the wind out of his treasures. Who were those girls that were in a Nazi uh, prison camp? The Corrie Tin Boom. Remember, she said about her sister. 
She was always joyous, always rejoicing. And she would always tell Corey, God is in control. And there they were naked, you know, and lice all through their bodies, you know, being starved to death. And even whenever they would be taken from prison to prison and be, they were treated really bad, her sister would always say, Corey, God is in control. Even when she's going through all that, and she died, you know, even when she's going through all those bad things, she never cursed God and never for one instant said God was out of control. I like that book. I, you know, it has really taught me a lot through the years about how, you know, we can, God can allow us to suffer, but he's there with us even in the suffering. Because God always tells me, daughter, I was always in the valleys with you. I didn't leave you in that valley alone. And even when Mary Catherine Baxter went to hell, Jesus went with her. And one time she said, Jesus, where are you at? And he told her, I'm here with you. That you know, because hell is so bad. So what I'm saying that for is that no matter what he asks you to do, he's there. He's really there, and he's really with you, and he's keeping you, and he is in control of your life. And Psalm 104:14 further illustrates this point. David said, "He causes the grass to grow for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth." This shows that despite man's efforts, farming would be impossible if God did not raise the vegetation from the earth, right? Unlike man, God is not bound by nature. More than that, he is in total control of it. I never thought about that way. Now, when we think about the history, see, that's the trouble. We don't think about God in, in every area of our life. We take too much for granted. We don't really stop and think, why is this existing? Why is this happening? All right. I I, I look at a lot of things like that. And, and, you know, and uh, I, I just have to stand in awe sometimes of what God really does do. Right now I'm on this little kick about the different animals he made <laughs> and how come he made them the way he made them. But see, he was in control of all that too. Little Isaiah got me started on that, by the way. All right. Now, when we think about the history of the world and see how many nations have brought about pain, war, and bloodshed, it is easy to wonder if God was in control of these events. In the face of war, isn't it easier to believe that vicious, volatile men are in control rather than God? Do you think God didn't know that those planes were going to run into the Twin Towers that day they did? Yes, he did. Do you think he didn't know who was going to be there? And look, at, have you read the testimonies of the people that should have been there, but for some reason or other didn't go to work that day? You need to think about all these things. We need to understand that God is not worried about world dictators because the only reason they are in position of power is that God allowed them to be. And Job 12, 23 states, he make, makes the nations great, then destroys him. He enlarges the nations and straightens them again. And Psalm twenty two twenty eight says, further stresses this idea, for the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is a governor among the nations. You know, whenever whenever Obama was in for president, whenever he was elected, I asked God why, and he said, the people wanted a king, I gave them a king, and now they're going to see what a king will do for them. And then he referred me back to Saul. You know, Saul was not supposed to be the king, but they wanted, they wanted him for king, and so God let him have a, a king. They didn't want God's choice. They wanted their own choice. So God allowed it. He was in control. He's in control of what's going on right now. And he's told me it's because the people didn't pray as they ought. And they weren't seeking his face the way they should have been before they voted. You can. I don't care if you believe that or not. I know that that's the truth. Okay, so we see that there is no nation, president, dictator, or army that does anything outside of God's control. Now, this does not mean that we will understand why certain things happen, right? There are obviously some atrocities such as a slave trade and the Holocaust that seem to defy explanation. However, we have the assurance of Scripture that even when we do not understand his plan, God remains in control of every nation. Everything that has ever happened in the world, we can find in the scriptures. Years ago when I was first born again, 
God spoke to me, and I didn't know my scriptures. He said, America is Babylon. Well, I happened to tell that to another pastor there where I was in their church. I got booted out of that church, too. But there's a video out now proving it. And, you know, God said, it, it doesn't matter what they're saying to you. I'm telling you, America is Babylon. And they have now have a video out proving that America is Babylon. Everything that's going on in the world today is in the Word of God, if you just search it out, everything. Remember whenever when um, they were talking about our names are in, in scriptures, our whole life is written in there. Um, what's his name? Who? Perry Stone. Perry Stone, he found his name in there, and he, he knew the baby that was going to die, and all of his children's names were, are in there. You know, see, you don't search it out. And if somebody writes a book on something that you think is foreign or lie, you don't read it or ask God about it. How many of you, whenever you get a book, when you hold it in your hand, you know whether or not it's spirit-filled? You just, you don't have to read it. You just know whether or not it's God or not. You know, and then that you lay aside. I can, I can read a prophetic word and know whether or not it's God. I can read an article and know whether or not it's from God or just the person saying it. See, if you're filled with the Spirit, you're going to know these things. And God wants us, because God is always in control. And you have to know, you have to be a person who is so close to God, nothing can separate you from Him. Absolutely nothing. Just like that, well, what, what we read before we did song service this morning, you know, I was, God had been showing me something. I was having a vision, and then he started prophesying that, and I couldn't even move into bed until he was finished. I jumped out of bed and ran to my computer and said, Holy Spirit, you're going to have to repeat this to me, and he did, and then we did it this morning. See, that's God. You know, he can interrupt my sleep anytime he wants to. Can he, can he interrupt your sleep anytime? Somebody, don't, don't be shaking your head, Jess. <laughs> when he wakes you up at 3 o'clock and says, oh, I'm too tired to listen. God, let me go back to sleep. <laughs> See, he's in control of your life, but you're, you're refusing to do what he wants you to do. <laughs> right? And I have noticed I'm up all night long anymore. But I, you know when I start getting my messages, it's always 3 o'clock in the morning. I can sit there for two, three hours trying to get a message. At three o'clock, he'll start speaking to me every time. So, okay, so now I realize this. I realized that two nights ago. I said, okay, I'll just do everything else at three o'clock. I'll sit here and, and get a message. He, he likes to get you in three o'clock in the morning. Okay. Okay, something else we often fail to understand is that God is sovereign over those who do not even believe in him. How can God reign in the life of an unbeliever? Okay, well, let's go back to the three o'clock thing. What I was trying to get across is God is in control, right? So I'm there two hours saying, God, please give me a message. And he doesn't give me a message. But at three o'clock, he starts. He's in control. I want to talk to you at three and not at one or two. I want to talk to you at three. So God is in control because he's not going to give me that message till he's ready, Right? Small point, but it's a point. Daniel chapter 4, verse 28, tells a wonderful story about the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar. In verse 30, the king reflects on his own greatness, saying, Is this not Babylon the great, which I myself have built as a royal residence by the might of my power and for the glory of my majesty? How's that for arrogance? This is a man who praised only himself for what God had allowed him to accomplish. God heard Nebuchadnezzar's boast, and in verse 31 and 32, the Lord responds, King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is declared, sovereignty has been removed from you. God goes on to explain how he will humble the mighty king until he recognizes that the most high is ruler over the realm of mankind and bestows it on whomever he wishes. You know, instead of the, the king giving God the glory for what he did, you know, what how what he built, he gave his own self glory. This is why you should never say this is my church. It is if it's not God's church, then forget about it. And if God didn't build it, forget about it too, because it's gonna fall. All right. 
in verse 37, we see the king, after having gone through his humbling experience, proclaiming honor and praise to the king of heaven. Even this unbelieving roar of a mighty nation realized that his control came only from God. Because we know that God is in control, we can find peace and several assurances from the Father. First, we find comfort in the fact that Almighty God, who is in absolute control of everything, is intimately and continually involved in our individual lives every single day. God never stops providing for, protecting, watching over, and caring for each other. And because He is sovereign and all-knowing, He knows exactly what we need for today and tomorrow. You know, I, I had twin brothers. <clears throat> One of them was killed at a very young age, and he was a little bit rambunctious. You know, he was he was a fighter and a, and a loud mouth, a wonderful person, but you know, he had that kind of personality. And the other twin was very quiet and very timid. Well, my brother Denny, he got killed. He, they raced cars, and he got killed at a very young age, twenty some. And for years, I would say, God, why did you take him? Because we were really, really super close. You'd have thought I was a twin too. We were just so connected. And and God said, he said, if I didn't take him, he would have ruined his brother. So he had to take him so that my, you know, the other twin wouldn't go down a wrong road. Because he said, he said, my, first, my other brother was going to go down a wrong road. I mean, he's in heaven because he hadn't gone there yet. But see, God, he's all sovereign. And he knows exactly what he's doing. I mean, you know, that was sort of hard to digest for a little bit, but God is God. And I didn't know God is God then. And I didn't know God is always in control then either. But uh, that's just how that works. If, you know, if you really would just sit down and ask God, why did you do this? He will tell you. He will explain everything to you. It's better that he take, that he took my brother then than... Watch him go to hell, right? I mean, in my opinion, that's the way it goes. Even though it took me years to get over that, but still in all, God was in it the whole thing. All right, the second thing, because God is sovereign, we have the assurance that he will work out every single circumstance in our lives for something good, no matter what, period. It may be painful, hurtful, difficult, or seemingly impossible, but God can and will use that situation to achieve his divine purpose. Romans 8.28 makes this clear, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. This claim makes sense only when we realize that God is in complete control. I say God is in control so much because God, he always asks me a question, am I in control or not? All right, so I know God is in, God is in control if we allow him to be in control. He's not going to go against our will. But he also has that written in Lamb's book, in, in our book of life too. Whenever we're not going to do what he asks us to do. All right, the third thing, we have the assurance that nothing can touch us apart from the permissive will of God. Psalm 34, 7, the angel, the Lord encamps around about them that fear him and deliver them. The angel, the Lord encamps camps around about them that fear him and deliver them. This, mean that God, this means that God is our protector. Now, when something happens that is painful or unexplainable in our lives, does that mean that God lost control for a moment? No. You're right, Brad. Because we know that these things cannot happen unless God allows them, period. This hope enables us to step boldly into the future because we know that God will be there for us forever protecting us and guiding our steps. If we didn't if we didn't really truly know that God is in control, we would be fearful of stepping forward into the unknown. I mean, God's calling us into the unknown. He's been calling us for quite some time, and we've been stepping into the unknown. Now, if we didn't trust God, knowing he's going, and the word of God says go, God's already gone before us and prepared to wait for us. And if we didn't know he was in control and has done all that, we'd probably still be sitting wondering, should I go or should I not? Should I do or should I not? Can I do or can I not? We'd be questioning ourselves continually. 
All right. When the church begins to understand that God is in complete control of this world and everything in it, your life will change forever because God is sovereign. Number one, God is omniscient. He can answer your most trying questions. And number two, God is omnipotent. He is strong enough to overcome your biggest obstacle. And number three, God is omnipresent. Wherever you may go, he will be there with you. And I don't know how many times, and I hope God's been telling you this. He tells me, daughter, I've already gone before you. And I will be with you in this battle. He always tells me that when I'm getting ready to go into something that's not going to be nice. He said, I've already gone before and prepared the way. So that means he's taking care of everything. And he's not going to let anything harm me because he is in control of my life. All right, no matter what pain, trial, or tragedy comes your way, rejoice that your father will be there to work it out for your good no matter what. All right, let me ask you this question. You know, we just said here that no matter what pain, trial, or tragedy comes your way, rejoice that your father will be there to work it out for your good no matter what. How many of you, when something does happen in your life, you sort of sit and shake your head and say, I, I just don't quite understand this, Father. I can't understand why this is happening. Would you please explain it to me? And then if you'll sit still, he'll explain to you why it is happening. And you won't go into that thing unknowing, you know, not knowing what's going to happen. You're not going to want to go into that thing because it's going to be bad. But God has already told you. He's, he's already gone before you and, and worked it out. Is there any situation out of God's control? There is no situation we will ever face that is out of God's control. So the best place to be is always is right with him. Philippians 4, 6, and 7, Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, pre present your request to God. So when people are anxious, they don't understand that God is in control. How many of you might have said, God, I don't understand, but you're in control, so I'm just going to, you're just going to do what you got to do. And you don't like what's going on, but you know it has to go on in order for things to, to turn out the way God desires them to turn out in your I'm talking about your own individual lives maybe even in your loved ones lives Isaiah 41 10 God told the Israelite children fear not for I am with you be not dismayed for I am your God I will strengthen you yes I will help you I will uphold you with my righteous right hand that's a good scripture to stand on he might have been talking to, well, he was talking to the Israelite children, but the, the word of God is for us too, right? It's to edify us and lift us up. So I stand on that scripture, that God is with me and he strengthens me and, and he's not going to let anything happen that he has not already foreordained. All right, Proverbs 16, 9 says, The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Proverbs 20, 24 reads, A man's steps are from the Lord. How then can man understand his ways? Remember when we, I told you before, when we went come into this building, things were chaotic, really chaotic. We was trying to get it, you know, fit for a church. And I set no steps, and I was crying. I said, God, what is going on here? He said, I didn't tell you to move here. Man did. And because you're out of my will, this is what's happening. And he said, but I'll keep you while you're here. I know I know why you did it. You did it because you thought you were doing the right thing and you didn't seek my face about this building. And he said, you'll, I will keep this building as long as you're in it. You won't have an overflow, but you'll have enough to keep it running. And that's how it's been. We were having all that trouble getting it together because man told me I needed to move out of my home into here and I didn't pray, I just took it. Please pray about everything that you do because you get yourself into a mess if you don't. 
Okay, Proverbs 20, 24, we read that it reads, a man's steps are from the Lord. How then can man understand his way? And then Proverbs 16, 33 says, the lot is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is from the Lord. Human beings decide all kinds of ways to make a decision, do we not? They try rolling dice, they draw lots, and they put out pieces of cloth in the ground. Whatever the point here is, whatever means they use, it's going to be God's will in the end, and every decision is from the Lord. It was it still is not God's will that I'm here, but he says as long as I'm here, he would keep me. So he is still in control. And he said the doors would never shut because he's the one to open them. Man will not be able to shut them. And we've been investigated a couple of times when we first started, but they backed off and left us alone because God is in control. <laughs> you see this? The policemen even come in, uh, the town come in and sit down in one of our services to check us out and see what we was all about. They haven't bothered us since. God opened his eyes and let him see what he, what God wanted him to see, not what the neighbors were saying. Are you understanding this? We've never been fearful, never. Even whenever the COVID thing happened and everybody's closing doors, God said, me, do not close those doors, keep them open. Nobody ever come and ask us why we were still open. They never said one word to us, they just left us alone. See, because God is in control, and God is the one who said, don't close the doors. Nobody could do anything about it because God is in it. I hope you get this down in your spirit tonight. Proverbs 19.21 says, Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is a purpose of the Lord that will stand. Whatever humans anywhere in the world are planning and doing, what stands is God's will. And, and, you know, God's saying right now, everything that's going on in the world, there's a purpose for it. It's all leading up for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And these things have to happen. And if you read your word and really know your word and God reveals the deep secrets, it's in the word. We just haven't dug it out of there yet. There are pastors that are digging it out. Brother Allen digs it out. But, you know, I don't have time to dig it out. I let them tell me. <laughs> and then I go look at the scripture. Yeah, or let God tell me. All right, Jeremiah 10, 23 says, I know, O Lord, that the way of man is not in himself, that it is not in man who walks to direct his steps. Jeremiah says, I know, O Lord, that the way of man is not in himself that it is not in man who walks to direct his steps. God is in total control. Now, if you don't believe that he is in control after reading those scriptures, then you need to go to the throne, and you need to sit at his feet, and you need him to explain some things to you personally. There's too many out there saying that God is not in control of all things. If he wasn't, we'd live in a chaotic world, would we not? It w wouldn't be fit to live in. And I know that it is getting dark out there, but God has already told us a couple years ago, five years ago, that gross darkness was going to come across the land. And, and there would be a lot of chaos going on in the land. I mean, he's told us everything that's going to be happening. We have it written down. And we're watching each thing come to pass. We're not ha happy that it's coming to pass, but God already knew it was going to. Your life, what you're going through, it, you know, is already written in heaven. And God knows exactly what you're doing. You need to understand that, that God is continually watching over you each and every second, each and every moment of the day. There's not one day that God is not watching over you. And he is making sure that you're being kept safe. He is making sure you might go through a lot of problems, but the enemy cannot kill you. You know, I, I agree with the word. I would not want to be one that just never had a challenge in life. That would be an awful dull life. And I don't know about you, but I like a good fight. 
And when the enemy comes my way, he's he's met a good fight because I'm not going to sit down and play dead. God said we are the victorious ones. We are the overcomers. And the way we do that is by standing on the word of God, standing in faith and putting the devil under our feet where he belongs. He never was supposed to be over our heads. We allowed that to happen. All right. So tonight, God wants you to have a calm assurance that all is well. You know, you think about the Shumanite woman whenever she was, when her son died, and she kept saying, all is well, all is well. What she was saying is, God is in control. When we were singing that song about all is well, God told me that. <laughs> You know, it, that's what she was saying. She, all, you know, God's in control. All's well, she's saying, because God has this in his hands. I'm really not worried about it. I'm just going to go to the man of God and make him come back here and raise this child from the dead. You know, we don't say all is well when we get into trouble. We wring our hands and we get on the phone and we call this one, that one, and the other, and we act like a fool. And really what we need to say, God, you're still in control. All is well. And I've been telling some of you to say, just say all is well and don't talk about it because God is in control of that situation. He was from the beginning, but you stuck your fingers in the pie and messed it up. And that's why you went through the turmoil you went through because you were not believing that God is in control. <clears throat> God said tonight, as you said under the wind, open heaven, that he's opening the windows higher then they're open the windows wider than ever before. And he wants to put a knowing that you know that you know into your spirit that God is in total control. And he's never out of control. And no matter what is going on, you can say all is well. God told uh, Chris Lynch and he told my oldest daughter that they're going to be left behind. And the reason why they're then, you know, and he told us at the same time, the reason they're going to be left behind is because they are strong and they know the word. And my oldest daughter doesn't even go to church, <laughs> but they know the word and he's going to use them to minister to those who don't know Jesus. I mean, you know, she knows that she's going to be left behind and we read what's going to happen when you're left behind. But, and the only thing is, she says, sometimes it sees her through that is knowing that it is God's perfect will for her to be left behind. I don't know if I would want to live all my life knowing that I'm going to have to be here when all hell breaks loose upon the earth. But I know my daughter can handle it. <laughs> She's a fighter. And uh, I know Chris Lynch can handle it. So that's just how God is. He knows who can handle things. He knows exactly who he's going to use to do what, when, and you know, he does not deviate from his plans for your life. You might, but he doesn't. Are you really ready to put your life in full and total control into God's hands? And then whenever you leave here, you, you can say, all is well. You don't even have to say, uh, God is in control, say, all is well. Because if you say God is in control, that gets you in trouble a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> but you can say both and just be confident that God is, God is with you. So the, the altar's open for that special anointing from God. <clears throat>